Good evening. I hope Good everyone's evening. doing well tonight. Yeah. So tonight we're going to begin with the chanting service. We call it Shodaigyo. And Shodaigyo means um, chanting practice, actually. <laughs> so Shodai is chanting and Gyo is practice. <clears throat> so um, the, Stacy will be putting the program up as we get started. Uh, just to explain to you uh, what Namu Myoho Renge Kyo means. Um, Myoho Renge Kyo is the title, the Lotus Sutra. It, you might hear it also referred to in Sanskrit, Sanskrit as Sadama Pandurika Sutra. So in the Japanese pronunciation of ancient Chinese, we get myo ho ren ge kyo. Namu is kind of a derivative of namas, possibly. We're not entirely certain. Um, but it means devotion to or respect for what follows. Myo ho ren ge kyo. Myo ho means wonderful. Dharma, myo, that particular character has multiple meanings but it means so many things in relation to the entirety of the sutra itself. And I'll share that in a minute. Renge is lotus flower uh, because the lotus flower is the only plant that produces a flower and seed at the same time, symbolizing cause and effect and its simultaneity. And kyo means sutra or sound much like uh, sound waves never die, they just keep going continuously or symbolized also by a warp of cloth. That's another translation of the uh, term kyo. So it means devotion to the sutra of the lotus flower of the wonderful Dharma. Now the character Myo, as I said, is wonderful. It also is mysterious. It's translated that way. And it is also translated to mean to open your heart, your mind, and your circumstances. It also means to be completely endowed with everything. Isn't that wonderful? That idea that we are completely endowed with everything. And so part of the reason that we chant this, the title, uh, in the beginning, when this was first brought about in the 13th century Japan, um, it was one way for people who were not educated to be able to practice the sutra. And anybody can chant. You don't have to know anything except how to chant. And often what uh, our founder Nichiren would say that people who were simple-minded and uneducated often had the purest understanding because they didn't try to change it. They just took it in and they did what they were supposed to do. And so it is thought also that chanting the title is the same as chanting the entirety of the Lotus Sutra because the title includes the full embodiment of the Lotus Sutra. So we chant it today you know, to realize our connection to the three treasures, to realize our refuge in the three treasures, and to just clean up our lives, straighten them up. It's a simple way of being able to follow all of the paramitas, um, to fell, uh, practice the bodhisattva way. So we're going to begin with that this evening. Any questions? No questions. Okay. Do you notice the explanation of Rai Hai? It's a deep bow. Rai Hai.
place your hands in gasho. Know this, this place where the stupa is erected is the place of enlightenment. Here the Buddhas attain Sambodhi. Here the Buddhas turn the wheel of the Dharma. Here the Buddhas entered into Parinirvana. Honor be to our eternal master of the Dharma, Shakamuni Buddha. Honor be to the great wisdom, the eternal Dharma that equally benefits all, the one vehicle of Myohoden Gekyo. Honor be to our founder representing Jogyo, the great Bodhisattva Nichiren Shonin. Please release your hands from Gasho. Place the fingers of the left hand onto the fingers of the right and complete the circle with your thumbs. This is the meditation mudra. It should rest about three finger widths beneath your navel. Your back should be upright, your head centered squarely over your body, and your eyes cast down at about 45 degrees, or you may wish to close your eyes if that's more comfortable. As you begin to breathe in slowly and deeply through your nose and breathe out slowly and completely through your mouth. And as you feel the breath flowing into your body, imagine the purity of its presence, the gift and joy of fresh bread. As it also tends to push out that which is old and used up. So consider bringing in clean, and eliminating the negative. As we use our breath to purify the mind, the body, and the heart. so that we may receive the ultimate benefit from chanting of the Odaimoku. Jo Shingyo.
Place your hands in Gasho as we now begin to chant the sacred title. And if you wish, Stacy, you may stop sharing your screen so they can look at the one here. That will work. We will begin chanting in two parts. Breath, Namu, Myoho, Breath, Renge, Kyo. Then we'll advance to Breath, Namu, Myoho, Renge, Kyo. And finally, we'll just go into kind of like a free for all from faster to slower and get where we get. Namu Myoho Renge Kyo Namu Myoho Renge Oh. 
Please release your hands from Dasho and return to the meditation position. Check your posture. Check your breath. Find the comfort within your body. And also connect to the energy of the Odamoku as it flows through you. Considering we have polished our minds and our hearts and body, we now connect to the three treasures, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. And in so doing, what arises within each of us is that Buddha nature that connects all of us to each other. And as the character Myo says, we have opened ourselves body, mind, and heart to each other. And we are a collective force of Dharma practitioners grounded in faith that we all are potential Buddhas. And it is necessary for us in this particular time because there is always a specific time where it's important to embody fully the teachings of the Buddha. And we follow that path, each of us, in our own individual ways, with full understanding of the promise of Buddhahood. So we now begin silent meditation to deepen faith 
with the merits of our practice. Jin Xing Gyo.
with reverence, we offer up the merits we have accumulated through the chanting of the Odaimoku, so that in doing so, we may receive the greatest of compassion through the transcendental powers of the original Buddha. For all people, we uphold this universal Dharma teaching of equality that benefits all. We deeply vow to diligently strive for the improvement of both our societies and ourselves, as well as to diligently strive for the achievement of world peace. We pray that all people throughout the four corners of the world may return their lives to the eternal Buddha's pure land through the wonderful Dharma of Myo Ho Den Ge Kyo. Namu Myo Ho Den Ge Kyo. We pray that each and every family member as well as our benefactors and our friends, all live in accordance with the true Dharma. We pray they all enjoy good health in both body and mind. May they increase their understanding of the Buddha's wisdom, expiate their past transgressions, do good deeds, and lead a virtuous life. May they learn to respect each other. We pray that they embrace the correct practice of Buddhism perform virtuous work, assiduously improve themselves and achieve family happiness. May they all obtain eternal peace and happiness. We pray that all beings as well as myself will awaken to the true nature of reality, which is the Buddha nature and that we will attain the enlightenment of the Buddha. Namu myoho denge kyo. We pray for all of the deceased, for the spirits of our ancestors, for all those who have formed a relationship with the Buddha and those who have not. May you all follow the benevolent life of the Tathagata. <clears throat> May you cross the ocean of suffering, reach the further shore and attain Buddhahood. May the merits we have accumulated through this deep offering of prayer be distributed equally among all living beings. May we all attain the enlightenment of the Buddha. May all the Dharma realms equally benefit all. Namu myoho denge kyo. Sentient beings are innumerable. I vow to save them all. Our defilements are inexhaustible. I vow to quench them all. The Buddha's teachings are immeasurable. I vow to know them all. The way of the Buddha is unexcelled. I vow to attain the path sublime. With this body, until I attain Buddhahood, I will uphold my faith in the Lotus Sutra. Namu Myoho Denge Kyo. Namu Myoho Denge Kyo. Namu Myoho Denge Kyo. Rai Hai. Thank you. So we just sit for a minute.
it's mostly women here today, right? So that's great. <laughs> we were studying chapter 12 of the Lotus Sutra. And uh, it's probably one of the most famous chapters in the Lotus Sutra outside of uh, the one for Kanan or Kuan Yin. Um, chapter 12 is entitled Devadatta. And so you may know that uh, Devadatta was Shakyamuni's cousin. And they had plenty of time to build up a relationship that was fraught with jealousy and envy. <laughs> the first instance was because um, Devadatta was quite fond of Yasodhara, but she was married off to Shakyamuni. So that was his first encounter of jealousy that we know of anyway. And uh, he did study along with the Buddha and followed him and became part of the Sangha, but ultimately did everything he could to sabotage the Sangha. He even tried to kill the Buddha. He convinced uh, one of the son of one of his uh, devout followers, King Bimbisara, that he should murder his father so he could take over the kingdom. And even in spite of that, the Buddha talks about in chapter 12, that the reason he became a Buddha was because of Devadatta, because Devadatta was his first teacher or one of his teachers. And because of him, he was able to advance along the path and continue until he was awakened. And we tend to look upon this as very symbolic of what's happening in our lives, that we all have a situation that is much like Devadatta, one that harasses us or stymies us or whatever you want to call it. Um, but the object is to understand that that whatever's going on, however negative it is, it still is there for our advancement. It allows us to grow and develop, even as we may hate every second of it, but it is for our good. And it also really shows clearly that it doesn't matter how evil or wicked you are, that it doesn't matter that just as you are, you can also attain Buddhahood. Uh, and he assured his listeners that Devadatta would become a Buddha in the future. He just had a lot of work to do. The second half of the story or the chapter everybody hears this great story and said, okay, okay, Devadatta is going to be enlightened in the future. We can go now. And one of the other bodhisattvas said, wait a minute. And uh, Shakyamuni asked if there was anyone who had achieved Buddhahood quickly. And Manjushri said, yes, there is. I've been teaching under the sea to uh, the dragon kings, the people in the, the beings in the dragon king's kingdom. And there is one person who has achieved enlightenment and is ready to do so. Uh, and so out comes an eight-year-old dragon daughter. And they're all just aghast, oh my gosh. How could this female become a Buddha? Because we know females have uh, the five hindrances. They cannot become King Mara or Brahma King, or there's two more, and then a Buddha. And they also have three obligations to their fathers, their husbands, and then their sons. So it's impossible for a woman to attain an awakening. 
So this little dragon princess goes to the Buddha and hands him a jewel, a wish granting jewel, which he accepts quite readily. And as these other bodhisattvas are complaining that there's no way possible for her to achieve awakening, she asked them, did the Buddha receive my jewel quickly? And they said, yes. And she said, very quickly. And they said, yes. She says, well, I will achieve awakening much faster than that. And so she turns herself into a man, becomes enlightened, starts teaching and all this stuff, and returns herself to being the female daughter princess. And essentially, people throughout history have interpreted that to mean that she had to become a man. Fortunately, wiser folks than us <laughs> have said, no, that's not quite it. And the question was, when did she achieve her awakening? And it is thought that the minute she gave her jewel to the Buddha was when she became awake. She awakened and became a Buddha. <clears throat> People get stuck on the other part where she goes over to the bodhisattvas. And the one thing she says to them, use your supernatural powers. Were she not awake, she would not be aware of their supernatural powers. And basically, it's kind of like saying, for the slow people in the back, I'm going to become a man so you can really see this happening and then accept it. And so um, when we talk about these things uh, in our, uh, the way we teach them is for us to realize that all of us have Buddha nature, no matter what. And according to the character Myo, we are perfectly endowed with everything we need to achieve awakening. We just have to be open to it and not be hampered by these notions that uh, people keep putting upon us that we're not able to do that. Because for many of us, all the voices outside can become um, like a perfume that infiltrates everything, our, our view, how we see ourselves, how we see the world, all of that. And because we're not aware that it's like a perfume that taints everything, we often can't see it. And so that's where our prayer becomes important to understand that mind is just mine. And those words that we hear are still just mind. And it's up to us to change our minds, right? Because if we change our minds, the way we think, the way we view the world, we can change our entire lives. And that is a prayer I think that each of us has without even articulating it, you know, it, and what does Rumi say? Let my heart be a place of prayer, that we're constantly praying, but we also have to be careful how we pray, because if we're praying from a standpoint that it can't happen, then what we are doing is contributing negative prayers. But I'm going to pray for it anyway, even though I know it's impossible. We're not giving ourselves a chance. And it's important that we recognize that particular perfume and not welcome in any negativity that will take us off our path. And I think that's part of the point of that particular chapter, that things are gonna come at us and we just have to be awake and aware of how they're impacting us so we can move forward. Would anyone like to share what they experienced in chanting today? Or if you have any questions? 
Any questions about this kind of practice? So I know a lot of people think that uh, meditation is strictly silence meditation. Um, there's a whole lot to be said for chanting meditation, especially when it comes to uh, building a sangha, building community and having uh, connections to people. Because what happens is that your senses are in activated. And in trying to chant in harmony and rhythm with other people, there comes a point where everybody feels like um, chanting is a one voice. We all become one voice. And so that can be very enlightening and quite wonderful. Well, I'll just say uh, we we also chant in uh, the insight tradition. As uh, you all know, it's not um, the the same repetition. There's some degree of repetition. Um, but I found myself really eager to get to the the quicker pace of the yeah. chanting. Like it it. Uh, I appreciate the, the the cultivation of concentration that comes with the chanting. And so I was really aware at the beginning of my impatience, like, okay, this is great. I get it. Let's, but let's get to it. Let's get to the real. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> yeah, we still do that. Um, I like faster chanting and it, it really depends on where I'm at um, because sometimes when we're um, chanting really fast, it gets you so energized. So you have to be careful not to uh, do it when you're late at night, uh, but it also really gets you going. And that's, I really like that. Um, we're still doing our 24 hour chanting. So sometimes you'll hear, it's, it's very unusual because you get to hear different people do the chanting at different rhythms. And uh, sometimes it's really weird, <laughs> but I do like it fast. Um, but sometimes slow also is, it gets you to a deeper place, much deeper. Is what happened to me tonight is that I forgot and I have, you know, specific time breakdowns so we can have a good time with all of it. And I had just gone somewhere else. So didn't quite do that. <laughs> but it is fun. One of the things I notice is how much children love it. Uh, because all the kids, even down to my two-year-old grandson, uh, loves to chant with the drum. That's his thing. When I ask him what he's doing, he says, I'm chanting. And they're like, go away, leave me alone. I'm chanting. And some of those that uh, younger kids that, that are like eight or nine, uh, kind of dance with it a lot. Even though they don't know anything about it, it just makes them feel good. And that's great. Getting kids started without their awareness of what's happening. I just received a letter from one of the men I visit in prison. And he was moved to another unit. So he no longer has the Sangha. And it was, it was so sad to read how he felt about chanting by himself and how much he missed chanting in a group. And he never thought he would miss anything so much. The 
moving into harmony and oneness with all the other men. And so it's, it's great to be reminded of how well connected we become when we do things together. Um, it's something I think that we're all feeling right now because it's so many times in our environment, it's kind of missing, you know that we're not taking care of each other. We're not connected to each other. And I especially feel that now here in Texas uh, with all the nonsense that's going on. Uh, but how communities that do connect really thrive and con communities that take care of each other, <clears throat> excuse me, and have been doing it for centuries, not you know, who has more, but how everyone has enough. And somehow we've lost that space where everyone has enough and don't even realize that it's missing for many of us, I think. I'm hoping, it's my great hope that all of us Buddhists working together because it's a central point in all of our teachings of our connection and our interdependence that we're able to set up a vibration that changes the world. And as we do so, finding like-minded people of faith from all traditions that can walk together, because we all have something in our teachings that speaks to our interdependence. And so somehow we have to take care of that. Well, most of the time when we're doing this particular practice, it's to get everybody into uh, harmony with each other. <clears throat> you know, and, and especially if there are people who are not really familiar with uh, chanting, uh, this particular chant, then we take it slow. When we're in a group that's so accustomed to it, then we just take off like gangbusters sometimes. Um, but we also don't want to do it too fast because then you could lose the potential for uh, creating harmony and creating unity because not everybody wants to chant really, really fast, right? Um, now, if we were chanting the sutra itself, because we do also chant 28 chapters of the sutra and uh, on, in our regular daily service, we may chant three chapters of the sutra so that we can um, really take in the sutra into our bodies in a way that's um, driven not by our understanding, but by our um, <clears throat> ability to just feel the words and get into a nice rhythm with it. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but it feels that way when we're chanting together. Uh, we have often in a, a, a week's time chanted the entire sutra, all 28 chapters. And um, it's done an incredible amount for all of us who do that. Um, so it just depends. And, and sometimes you want to chant really fast to get through it. Um, because if you're chanting for an hour, that's, you know, quite a long time to chant sometimes. I'm sorry if I'm distracted, because I just found the address. So I want to try to put it in the chat so that you all can have it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But again, I like to use that reference from uh, Rumi to let our hearts be places of prayer. And that's how I tend to view us chanting all the time is that it becomes a place of prayer. It becomes a prayer. 
that we're all able to say together and put in our own meaning to it. I think we also chanted in English. Oh. I did want to say that. Um, so while we have it getting into us through um, chanting in, in the original language, we also get it in English so that we are able to access it body and mind together. Is it time? Just about. Oh, if we are, if we are just about at time, yeah, okay. I want to offer deep, deep gratitude for you um, joining us every month. You've been here every month with us since we started in April, and it has been uh, very sweet. <laughs> and uh, learned a lot from your practice, your teaching, and um, it's been an honor to have you here and also to be able to support you to offer these teachings. I think many of you know from Miyoke's uh, bio that uh, she is something very special. She is, is not only the first woman, but the first person of her ethnic background, African American and Japanese, to be ordained in the Nishren Shu order. And while I think not all of us are um, female identified here, but I think we can all appreciate uh, the significance of being the first and the first in multiple ways in supporting the practice of, of tender hearts and beings all over. So thank you so much for being here with us and um, so that Miyoke may continue to offer these teachings. And this is um, the way that Miyoke makes her livelihood and so that she may continue. This is the generosity of those uh, before us have allowed us to be here with Miyoke. Our generosity allows Miyoke to continue on and offer these teachings. Jessica has shared a link in the chat for the Common Ground Meditation Center website where you can go and um, find your way to Miyoke and she will receive two thirds of the dana that's offered tonight to support her livelihood. And Common Ground will retain a third so that we can continue to keep our doors open, the virtual doors and the literal door. So. <laughs> I can't do this. Excuse me. I'm sorry. That's all right. I, I just wanted you to know I can't <laughs> have been able to send this, paste it in the chat. So I sent it to you by email. Okay. Uh, and I apologize uh, for assuming everyone's identity. I forget myself sometimes. Okay. I think I can... Drop this in the chat. I'll try it now. So this is the Zoom invitation for the uh, chanting Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. So if you're on the same time. Yeah. And it's exactly uh, what we did here today. Okay. What I just put in there is not the... That, that's actually the program, the first thing that I, that I just pasted there. And then here we go. Here's the link for um, chanting. And do you lead that chanting me okay on Monday, Wednesday, Friday? Um, it varies between my husband and myself. Okay. So we will get to see you if we join. Us. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. And my dog. <laughs> heard anybody snoring in the background that was um, <laughs> okay okay she snores rather loudly <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Well, thank you all for having me and making me feel welcome. I appreciate all of you. Take care. Thank you so much, Neoke. Thank you, everyone. Take good care of yourselves.